What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today you can see I've got the drive shaft, the 90 degree drive shaft piece out and spawned, which can only mean one thing, today we're going to build the quad 16 engine, this is, uh, it's gonna be nuts, so I've built a V8 before, the V8 wasn't great, this is the V8, you can see we've got, uh, you know, 8 cylinders and they're all attached, but they're all attached at the exact same point, using this 90 degree drive shaft, so today we're gonna build the quad 16, which is basically this same engine but duplicated twice and we'll have uh you know four on top four on basically four on every side and have 16 pistons worth of power so i mean it should be a pretty simple build to be perfectly honest first thing we're gonna do we're just gonna attach this to a frame piece because we're gonna need a frame at some point so let's just attach that to there and just you know we'll we'll deal with that we'll paint that black there that's our frame and then we're just going to start at one end and work our way across. It should be the same setup for each one. And actually, it's not really terribly difficult. All we got to do is put four of these. Now, I am going to try and tune this without the logic gates. The V8 we made had logic gates. And of course, you know, logic gates are bad for timing. So we're going to try and tune this without it. And in fact, we're going to try and tune this with an adjustable, like, WS-controlled controller setting. So the player themselves can actually control where they want the controller at. Uh, and, and hopefully everything will work out great. So we're basically just gonna do this. This is gonna be nuts. This is gonna have so much power. It's gonna be insane. And the reason I like the Quad 16 and, and why it's gonna have so much power is, you think about it, at any point in time, there's always four pistons pushing it. And then, of course, this drive shaft doesn't use bearings. We're using the blueprint edited pistons, which allows us to actually, you know, move them 90 degrees without having it a problem. So I still need to learn a few things about, uh, you know, about clutches and stuff and transmissions. I did have a few people message me and show me different ways we can build clutches and transmissions. So we'll definitely have to get on that and uh, try making a working gearbox. I'd love to do that in vanilla. Uh, there is also the mechanical parts mod I've really got to get into. The uh, mechanical parts mod it just contains a bunch of gears and stuff as well. So we've got to take a look at that. But I would like to make some vanilla systems first because it would be nice to be able to compare the vanilla systems against the non-vanilla systems. Anyway, look at this thing. This is just, this is just stupid. This is already, this is already so stupid. It's amazing. Like, look at, look at how much power this thing's gonna have. I mean, I'm thinking the torque on this is gonna go over 10,000. If, if I don't see torque over 10,000, I would be blown away. I feel like it's gonna be a 10,000 torque machine. Probably not gonna be a whole crazy amount of horsepower. Uh, because the RPM still won't be that high. We still need to work on a smaller crankshaft. I really want to try some RPM experiments. I have a few ideas on how to get our RPM jacked up. Um, and then I'm going to deploy... You know what? I'm going to put the pistons this way. I don't know if this matters. I feel like it doesn't. If you put the pistons, you know, the mounting point from one end to the other. Maybe it does. Because the, the bottom is the parent. The outside is the child. I don't know. I'm assuming the force would be the same. No matter what. I, I feel like it would be. But yeah, I'm expecting 10,000 torque. I'm also expecting this engine would be great for piston-powered planes, um, except for the fact that it's super complicated. But one of the biggest problems I find with piston-powered planes is the resistance on the propeller is actually a fair amount. And so when you put an engine down and you try and have the torque on the engine spin the propeller, a lot of the time when you... You need a bigger propeller to go faster if you want more speed, right? Because you need more wings on the propeller. But the more wings you put on the propeller, the more resistance the propeller has, so it can't spin as fast. So there's really like a fine balance between, you know, how how much torque you can apply versus RPM. But I feel like this thing would, you know, it wouldn't lose any RPM and it would still be able to just torque its way through any propeller size. But anyway, 10,000 RP 10,000 10,000 newton meters of torque. That's what we're going for. Now, if I think about this correctly, all four of these always fire at the same time, all four of these fire at the same time, and all four of these fire, th yeah. So this is basically like an inline four, four times, and all four of them are just offset by 90, but it doesn't matter, they all fire off the same timing wheel. So, now we need the timing wheel, which we'll put over here. We can actually just put this, like, this can be our timing wheel, just like that. And we'll paint this black and half white, I'll, uh... Yeah, we'll have to figure out the stall points in a sec here. Alright, so we're just gonna take a pass through. We're gonna weld this up. And, uh, yeah, we're just gonna put this right here. There we go. Perfect. And then we're gonna put this all back on a lift. And we're gonna brick this all down. And, oh god. Oh, yeah, this is the pixel perfect. Come on. I probably should have put a block on this. Uh, hold on. Let's just do, let's just put a block there. There we go. Alright, now we can weld that. There we go. Now this should all just attach, no problem. 
All right, there we go. Everything's set with the sensors. I'm just going to paint the frame gray. So it's a little easier to tell what's frame and what isn't frame. Uh, and then we're just going to weld this to the ground real quick. Just so we can try and hook up these, uh, these sensor positions and see what happens. So this is going to be the interesting... Okay, so let's just paint this first. So if I paint this like this... This is another thing I wanted to sort of talk about. We always paint an L because that's half the blocks, right? You always want like four blocks on, four blocks off. But technically speaking, if we painted it this way, it would be a different shape of L. And I don't know how much that matters. I mean, it obviously does. In the When we tried to do the piston tank, the two engines had different shaped Ls and uh, they weren't symmetrical. So there's obviously a little bit going on, but I don't know how much it matters in one way versus the other way. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys know about the timing wheel L stuff. I know there's a lot of piston powered experts and uh, yeah, th this matters for sure. And I don't know if it generates more RPM this way, like with the bottom point of the L facing towards the direction of travel, or if it generates more RPM in the opposite way. And obviously, you know, how you control your, your bear. I need a bearing there. I totally forgot I need a bearing. All right, there we go. I've got a bearing there now. Perfect. Now we can attach our timing wheel to this guy. Yeah, which is, see that guy. Perfect. Free spinning. Excellent. I've had a lot of people tell me I should put the timing wheel on the loaded side, which is this side. But if I put the timing wheel on the loading side, now when we try and generate like, you know, 10,000 newton meters of torque, that bearing is going to collapse. Because the torque is being generated here, this is going to collapse, and it's not, like, it's not going to, it's not going to put, I think we need a pass-through on this side as well. And I think we have to actually connect our load to this side. Because I'm pretty sure this bearing, as soon as we put anything more than, like, what, 4,000 newton meters or whatever the heck a bearing can handle, it's just going to spin. Like, it's not, it's not going to, the torque's not going to generate through that. It's just going to twist this against this, and, like, this is definitely the wrong side. We can leave this set up. We need a pass-through on this side for sure. 100%. And I think this side is the side we put the load on. I think for, like, low RPM engines, it makes sense to go on the loaded side, because then as the load slows down your engine, like, if you're below the torque of a controller, it makes sense to go on the loaded side, but I'm pretty sure if you're above that, like, this is gonna, this is gonna be our weak point, 100%. This is perfectly rigid, this is not. So, yeah. So I think this pass-through is a giant, a, a giant waste of time. I'm not, I'm 99% sure we can put it on the other side, but we'll leave it for now just because it doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't hurt too much. I think we do this and we put the pass through there and we move our whole frame out one just to, just to accommodate that. So we go like this, we put this here like this, and then we just, we move the whole frame out one block. Yeah, I, I'm 99% sure this is what we want and we want to attach our, our, you know, our dyno and stuff and our chassis and all that up to this thing. All right. And now we, of course, have to do the magical game of uh, painting the wheel. So we're gonna, we're just gonna paint it like that, and figure out which goes where. All right, perfect. And I actually think I set it up. Look at that! I set it up in a stall point. That's actually awesome. All right. So now, theoretically, all we have to do is take this guy and just put it on here. Connect this into the controller. Set the controller to be on a loop at, let's say, 5 degrees. And now if we hold W... Okay, that's definitely the wrong direction. We definitely want to go the other way, I think. And let's make that loop 10 degrees. 5 degrees seems really freaking slow. Now the thing with loops and controllers is that whatever position you loop the controller to, that's the position that it's going to, uh, like the number of increments you can have. So you can't stop at anywhere that isn't 10 degrees when you hold W or S. That's basically, it'll go to the closest like 10 degree point and that's where it'll stop. So if we want to have like really fine tuning on our engine, we'd set that to one degree, but obviously if it was one, then we would take like 200 years to get there. This is sick. I'm holding W now and look at that. Okay, this thing, this thing actually looks really cool. And just hold W some more. Yeah. And it just keeps advancing the timing. And then eventually it's going to like get past the point of no return and stall out. Yeah, there it goes. Start going backwards. So that's the only thing with this setup is there's no way to really put a limit on it. I mean, there is. We could use some logic gates and double controllers. And then we could say the controller can't move unless the logic gate's on. We could use mods too. Oh, I just flipped the direction of the engine. All right. Well, this thing's sick. I mean, it's going to work, right? It's going to, it's going to work. 
It's gonna generate some power. Let's just save this as the, uh, what is it? The box 16, I guess. Let's throw this bad boy up on the dyno. I'm, I, I'm going for 10,000 newton meters. It's gonna happen. We're gonna get 10,000 newton meters out of this thing. It's ridiculous. Like, there's no way we can't. The V8 put out, like, what? Four or five thousand? This is gonna, this is gonna do ten. I'm feeling it. We just gotta, you know, really, oh my god, yeah. It just, it torques everything. It's great. There we go. Okay. So now we gotta, uh, hold on. You know what? We can do this. We can take this seat off. Let's put this seat right here. There we go. And then let's hook this up to there. Perfect. And now it's doing 72 RPM. If I hold W, starts up, starts kicking. 190, 200. Looks like a good spot there. Let me just reset the numbers real quick. Because it has all the average RPM, including like the really low ones, right? Let's go up a little bit more. There we go. Holy cow, it goes above 300. What? Are you serious? Or is that just a moment? It, it does 306. If I go W more, does it come down? No, 307. Well now. Isn't that interesting? Look at that thing go. That that is an engine you would not want to put your hands in. Look at look at the logic. Oh, you can't even tell. It's just it's yeah, never mind. Anyway, those little blue dots, they're moving in and out. Uh yeah, these little ones. They're technically moving in and out as the piston goes around. You can clearly you can clearly see that happening. This is this is actually wicked cool. That is just that's just it's so symmetrical, like everything is balanced. Every time you exert a force on this engine, it's equal force all the way around the thing. Like around the drive shaft. Alright, this thing's gonna this thing's gonna put out power. So that's the spot. Whatever the heck, I don't know what angle we're at. I can't even tell. Um shoot, I should make like I could make a little meter. That tells us how much and, and basically sync the controller up and then we can see you know what let's do that real quick this is going to be this is going to be for a test engine anyway but let's basically take this and if we put a little a little piece like this whatever um and then we can hook a bearing up to it here and let's just paint this like gray and then if i technically if i do this and do that and i hook this up to here rotate that way and i set it to the same 10 degrees then it should go yeah, see, it's going to start moving now to whatever position I hold that steering wheel. So we'll be able to kind of tell what angle this is at. Uh, the timing wheel. Anyway, this should match the timing wheel angle. So we're at, oh, wow, we're over 100, we're over 90. We're over 135. Are we at 180 degrees? Over 180? This is So this is like a 190 degree angle is what we're doing with the timing wheel. But anyway, that's, that's actually a very useful meter to have. Now I can see I can pull it back and it'll show me exactly what spot we went to. There's 180. That's so interesting. All right, let's load it up. 180. Seems like a good spot. Spinning at full speed. Let's start. It hasn't even... Oh, it just stalled out. Are you serious? It only gets three... Oh, wait, no, that's average torque. But still, it only gets 3,000... And now it's going backwards. That's right. No, 180 is going to be, yeah, in, input reversed. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is going to be bad. 180 is going to be, one, oh my god, look at the torque curve. And now, there's no way this is, it's, what, it's, wait a minute, what? What is it, what is going on? Okay, I need to slow down the timing. That's right, because under loaded conditions, the timing needs to be a little bit less. So obviously, 180 is aggressive for RPM, but it's going to, as soon as it applies the load, it wants to flip the engine backwards. So we need to go to like 135 or something. Like, somewhere that's a little diagonal. Uh, we're gonna get 10,000 torque. I don't know if it's a real 10,000 torque or a fake 10,000 torque. This, this whole, look at, look at, like, this doesn't, can you imagine if you bring your car into the shop and they're like, yeah, so we ran the power curve and it, uh, look, the graph looked like this. Like, you just engage the magical, like, the always third gear that the Fast and Furious guys have. You ever notice that in the Fast Furious? They always have another, another like fourth gear to shift into, right? If you drive a manual, it's like one up, two down, three up, four down, and they always seem to have another fourth gear to shift to. Well, there's ten thousand newton meters. That's nice. I think that's a fake number though. Let's just, let's just for, for yeah. See, it's still going up in max torque. Uh, two hundred thirteen horsepower. 
that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool if this is actually 213 horsepower. All right, let's uh, let's bring this back. Let's bring this back down to like 135 degrees or something on the timing wheel so that it doesn't flip direction under load. There we go. How's that? Still getting 300 RPM, right? Are we? Yeah. Yeah. What's the minimum point, actually, that we can get 300 RPM? All right, so let's try it like that. That's like a really low timing that still gives us max RPM because under load, I think this is what's going to matter. We are rotating clockwise currently. So let's start it up and see if it flips. Still clockwise. Still clockwise. Still, yeah, this is a much better test. Yeah. Holy cow. 5,000, 6,000. Still clockwise. There we go. 200 RPM. Oh, oh. 8,000 Newton meters. Starts to stall out. I don't think this is ever going to stall out. I think we could leave this and it would go up to 20,000 Newton meters. Just because of, you know, scrap mechanic piston things. It seems to hit the first stall point at 7,900 though. So it's just not quite 10,000 Newton meters. We look at uh, max power, max torque, 204 RPM, 218 horsepower, and 8,700. This is insane. You know what? Can I leave that? I bet you I can leave that and still spot in a new one. Got that piston engine test chassis. I'm going to put it on the, uh, the unloaded side or the loaded side here. There we go. We got, of course, weld this to this like that. Might as well weld it on both sides, even though it doesn't really matter. And we're going to need a we're going to need to prop this up. This thing is going to need to be propped up a little bit with just a controller feeding these two guys. Now we should be able to delete this, take this seat, hook that seat into there, and break this off. And there we go. We're good to go. We can actually drop these down a little bit. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. And now if we hit W, this thing should just take off. No problem. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even, it doesn't feel the weight. And now we can probably get this up to like the full 300 RPM. There's 90. This thing is so cool. It actually, it actually feels like we're getting close to that 300 RPM. I think our problem now might be the 90 degree gear shift might slip. Like this 90 degree gear piece. It does like to pull randomly to the right. I feel like that's just torque, though? Or to the left, I mean. But I feel like that's just the torque. Like, see, if I don't touch anything... See, it sometimes likes to pull to the left. But I feel like we're just torquing. Anyway, what do we got for... What do we... Okay, perfect. Why are we negative on the RPM again? We're doing 63 kilometers an hour. Oh, this is the one without the math. Oh, I put it on the wrong... Oh, my God, I'm an idiot. I put it on the wrong chassis. This is the dumb chassis. I need to put it on this chassis. There we go. Now, yeah, now it all works. All right, so the top one should be the RPM of our front wheel, which tells us exactly, you know, how fast we're, we're getting that front wheel going, which, you know, theoretically is kind of like the efficiency of the engine minus the drive and stuff, and we're stuck on a rock. No, power through it. Thank you. So that's the RPM of the front wheel, and then the back number... Um, that is the, uh, the speed we're going in kilometers an hour as it's been converted. So we're actually getting 240 RPM at the wheel, which is pretty impressive. Uh, let's pull this back. Let's see if we can really get that. Like, it makes sense, right? So if you think about it, no engine is ever going to put out the same RPM as it does under, under loaded conditions, right? It's always going to have a, a higher RPM when it's unloaded. But if we get 230 RPM out of this, if you guys notice, the peak power of this engine was 200 horsepower at like 210 RPM on the dyno. So the fact that this can do 230 RPM, that means we're getting pretty much peak power. We're getting 200 horsepower every time. Like this is a 200 horsepower car in scrap mechanic with no gears. But it's it's pretty quick. It's pretty good. All right, I'm going to do one thing. I want to I wanna try. Oh, right. That's right. I can't stop. I have to hold the S to slow down. Until it gets to that stall point. Might need to change the angles. This is how long it takes to brake. We need actual brakes. I need to build brakes into tires. But anyway, that's a future problem. Uh, but what I want to do, I want to just take these. And I'm just going to do this real quick. And this might seem really stupid. But I'm going to put these spacers just around the XO meters. And then I'm going to put the bigger wheels on it. Those big, huge, um, 
the pipe piece wheels that aren't really wheels, but like we've been using as wheels and seem to do well these things, right? And then we can go like that and like that. And it might be a little, it might be a little jank, but this should give us more, more speed by a fair amount. And we shouldn't lose any RPM at the rear wheel. Let's go full speed ahead. There we go. Where's that meter? Get that up. This is sick. This is actually insane. This engine doesn't feel anything. Like, it doesn't feel the weight of the car. We're almost at 180 degrees. How fast are we going? Less than 200 RPM. Okay, so it, it's... Oh, gotta turn this way. Hold on a minute. There we go. Alright. Kind of grinding a little bit. Look at I've created the proper steering geometry just by jamming the wheel into the side of the chassis. That's exactly how they do it with your car, too. They just jam the wheel in, and then that way the inside wheel can't turn- Oh, wait, no, this is wrong. The inside wheel needs to turn more. Never mind. It's still broke. This is- this is, this is a rocket ship. This thing is so fast. We're doing 65 kilometers an hour with 200 horsepower. This is like the world's fastest tractor. This is sick. I, I love I love piston engines. It's so satisfying to me when you make a piston engine that works and then you finally like put it on your car and and then magic happens. Now we gotta make higher RPM piston engines and then we gotta build transmissions. This thing would be great to put in a vehicle with a transmission. I, I need to look at that mechanical parts mod and start building geared transmissions because yeah, th this thing has all the power in the world. It's got 200 horsepower, but it can't put that down to the road fast enough. It we need we need a gearing system. So that we can get more RPM out of the tires. And a series of trembles at a 2 to 1 is not going to do it. We need gears that are like, you know, different ratios. 1.1s and 3s and stuff. Like, gears where we've got 30 teeth to 10 teeth to make, you know, a 1 to 3 and, and that kind of thing. If we're not, we're not doing proper ratios, there's no way. But we're going to do it just a, we'll just do a nice click lap around the island here. It's kind of nice. I wonder, I probably have modded tires too. I could probably, you know what, hold on a minute. Let me, uh, I'm just going to, this is the faster way to break. I probably have, I have a mod on, yeah, we got some modded tires, there we go, 11 by 4s, how big are those guys, oh that's nice, is there anything bigger than an 11, there's a 15, a 19 by 9s, what do you think, you think we'll have the piston energy to push this, or I think we'll probably end up just flipping, we're probably just gonna end up flipping the whole front, we don't, look at that, we don't even need the angle really, but here we go, it, it literally just torques the whole engine. Don't worry, I'll get jammed in, though. Then we're good to go. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Once again, having the problem with the gear slipping, but that's fine. Yeah, this is the problem. We need a better gear system. The The gearing is, is bad, and we need gears that can actually deliver torque. That's the big issue. You gotta have... But, I mean, this works. It's a bit jank, but it works. And it, and it can generate some speed. This is kind of cool. Oh, is my engine coming back? Oh, it slipped. See, look. Look at that back gear. It's just It just slips right through it. As soon as you try and scale everything up, the gears are going to fall apart. So that's going to be really something that we're going to have to work on. Is making better gearing systems. And figuring out ways to deliver power. Because obviously, these gears aren't connected. They're two different physical bodies. And they just basically push past each other. Because of scrap mechanic things. So... That's, that's going to be a thing. If you guys know how to make better gearing systems, I mean, we haven't even made a differential yet that's small. I do have bigger differentials, but I don't think it would help either because it's still got the same gear problem where you're going to have two 90 degree gear teeth that have to push off each other. And uh, I don't I don't think it's going to work. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. We're going to go back and check on that other piston engine that's been hooked up to the dyno this whole time. I thought I left the dyno back here. Didn't I leave the dyno? Where is it? Oh, there it is. There's my dyno. All right, let's see what this thing's at. Oh, oh, right, I have to slow down like 10 minutes before. Well, you know, we're just, that's right, we're just gonna hop. I need to put brakes. I need to make brake systems. What a ridiculous thing. You need brakes, something that actually locks the axle and uh, prevents you from spinning it against the piston engine, which would just stall your piston engine out, but is this still going? It's still going. It's at 13,000. Yeah. See, this is, this is, it's, you're still spinning. So basically, it's like 8,000 newton meters, but it'll keep pushing through it. Oh! Oh no, it finally stopped! Look at that! It's not- it's not actually going... What's the current torque? Is it- it's just going like... It's going up and down around 13,600. 960? 13- oh, 960, yeah, 13,960. 
Huh. It actually did reach a max torque. Let's do one final test. I'm just gonna duplicate this. And we're gonna do the old classic... The classic test. And we're gonna put it up against an electric engine. Okay, so if we press 1... It can't even pull against the piston engine. Are you serious? That's an electric engine on full power? Wow. That is embarrassing. Alright, hold on a minute. Let's just, uh... Let's, let's give the electric engine really all the chance in the world. Instead of hooking it up to here, let's hook it up straight to these wheels. And, like, that way, you know, it's really gonna get maximum power out of this. So now it's really, it's like having two electric engines almost, right? But now if I hold W, the piston engines start moving into position, and it just torques through. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't even care. Yeah, and then it flips back up. Well... Not even at 10% power. That's the difference. There there you go. That is why we build piston engines. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what other kind of things you want to see in Scrap Academy. We gotta get into gearing systems. I'd love to hear your guys' suggestions for vanilla gearing systems. Gearing systems without mods. Um, I know there's the whole uh, mechanical parts mod. Definitely have to check that out. And get into some gears with that as well. But I'd like to look at some vanilla gear systems first. Before I jump into, uh, you know, just to, to doing all this modded stuff. Obviously, um, we need a better 90 degree gearing system. And ideally, we need a differential. So that when we go around corners, the inside gear turns less. Yeah, there you can see. Look, we lost it. As soon as the gear starts slipping once, that's it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.